Support the production of more videos by visiting the support move section on my website. The link is in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. So in this video, we're going to discuss the difference between atomic mass and atomic weight. But before we discuss either one, we have to talk about this definition. There's this thing called the atomic mass unit, abbreviated as AMU, which we actually mentioned earlier in this series. It's also called the unified atomic mass unit, or just U, um, depending on who you're talking to. Um, and it's also called the Dalton, abbreviated DA. I see that more in biology than I do in chemistry. Most of the time what I've seen, though, is AMU. Anyway, what is 1AMU? 1AMU is defined as 1 twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom, which happens to be equal to this mass in grams here. Okay, So this is an important definition that you should keep in mind. One atomic mass unit is equal to one twelfth the mass of a carbon twelve atom. Okay. So what? Who cares, right? Well, provided this definition, protons and neutrons have a mass almost exactly equal to one atomic mass unit, while the mass of an electron is about one one thousandth of an atomic mass unit, and it's essentially negligible in calculations. Okay, so you'll see here, right? These values are almost exactly equal to one, and they're often taken to just be equal to one. Okay, um, when calculating the atomic mass, which is why the mass number is sometimes referred to as the atomic mass. Um, but anyway, uh, let's keep this in mind when we go through and discuss atomic mass. Okay. as well as atomic weight. So what is atomic mass, really? It's the mass of a specific atom. And it's usually found using a mass spectrometer. Spectrometer. It's a device used to basically take the mass of specific atoms. Okay, I'm not going to get into the details about it, at least not in this video. So let's just say, for example, we're talking about silicon-28. Okay, so what the machine would do is it basically it would it would take the mass of the silicon atom, silicon twenty eight, relative to the mass of the carbon twelve atom, and it'll give you what's called a mass ratio, a mass ratio. Okay, and what what it'll end up getting is two point three three one four one one over one. Right? And that kind of makes sense. It's a value a little bit larger than, than 2. 28 divided by 12 is a little bit more than 2. Right? So this number should make sense. Okay. So the atomic mass of this specific silicon isotope, otherwise known as the isotopic mass, right? Iso oops, isotopic mass. Because we're talking about the mass of this specific isotope of silicon, right? Not silicon 29 or silicon 30 or silicon 27. We're talking about silicon 28 specifically. What we're going to do, oops, I put mass ratio on, <laughs> or ration, I meant to put ratio. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass ratio that we found here, we're going to take that mass ratio, and we're going to, we're going to take that if, and, and multiply it by the mass that we actually know, the mass of a carbon-12 atom, right? So the mass ratio is 2.331411, right? We're going to multiply that by the mass of this carbon-12 atom in atomic mass units. Well, what would it be? Well, if one atomic mass unit is defined as 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom, one carbon-12 atom would be 12 atomic mass units, right? So what we get then is 27 point nine seven six nine three atomic mass units. That is our value there. And you'll notice so this is the atomic mass of this particular isotope of silicon, right? This is the atomic mass or isotopic mass specifically of this one. Okay. And notice that's pretty close to the mass number of twenty eight, right? Which is why you'll often see the mass number to be taken to mean the same thing as atomic mass. Not quite the same thing, but 
they tend to go hand in hand, depending on who you ask, right? So um, if you're having questions about well, what's going on with atomic mass versus uh, mass number, or even about atomic weight, which we'll get to later, um, definitely be sure to clear that up with your instructor. With your instructor. Okay, now on to atomic weight. What is atomic weight? Atomic weight is the average. It is the average of all of the atomic masses of the naturally occurring isotopes of that element. And it's based on percent abundance. Okay, what the heck does that mean, right? That was a mouthful. What, what does any of that mean? Um, well, we'll kind of explain it with an example here in just a second. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention is that this atomic weight is actually what's listed on the periodic table. So it's got to be something that's pretty important or, or pretty useful. And it is. So let's just talk about this example. Boron. Boron is an element, and it has two naturally occurring isotopes. Okay? Boron-10 and boron-11, which can be written like this. Boron-10, boron-11. And it, it has... Um, an atomic number of five. Okay, so now boron ten and boron eleven both exist. Of all the boron that occurs naturally on Earth, twenty percent of it, twenty percent of it, is boron ten, whereas eighty percent of it is boron eleven. Boron ten has an atomic mass of ten point zero one three atomic mass units, whereas boron eleven has eleven point zero zero nine atomic mass units. Okay, those are the atomic masses of each respective isotope. Okay, so the question is, what is the atomic weight of boron? Well, it's going to be the average of the atomic masses based on the percent abundance. So it's kind of what what I've I've got here hidden behind, um, hidden here. So this is what we're going to do. This might look confusing, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the atomic mass of the first isotope, right, in this case, we're going to do it for boron 10, oops, for boron 10, and then we're going to take the percent abundance of boron 10 and multiply them, and then we're going to add it to the atomic mass of boron 11 times the abundance of boron 11, okay? Now, and that'll be it for us, because those are the only two naturally occurring isotopes. But this little equation I've got here, if we had more naturally occurring isotopes, we would just include them here, right? Um, and that's why it goes from 1, 2, and all the way up to n, right? Just the n being the number of, of naturally occurring isotopes that you have. You would just do this for all the naturally occurring isotopes you have. All you'd need is their atomic mass as well as their percent abundance. So the atomic mass of boron 10 is up here as 10.013 AMU. We're going to take that and multiply it by its percent abundance, which is uh, 20. So we're going to write that as a decimal, as 0 0.20, right? And we're going to add that to the atomic mass of boron 11, which is 11.009 AMU, multiplied, of course, by its percent abundance, which is 80. And when we do this, we'll get, for this value, we'll get 2.0026 AMU. And right over here, we're going to have... 8.8072 AMU. We add those up, we get 10.8098 AMU, which, since we started with, uh, what is this, five sig figs, I'll just keep this, the five sig figs at 10.810 AMU. Right, with five sig figs. So that's going to be our atomic, that's going to be the atomic weight of boron. And if you'll notice on the periodic table, that's actually the number that's written there, right? That number at 10.81, that's the atomic weight. Okay. So again, if you if you have if you're doing a problem that has more than just these more than just two naturally occurring isotopes, just be sure to include them in the calculation. And another thing, again, I often see atomic mass and atomic weight being used interchangeably to mean the same thing. So definitely talk to your instructor about what the, what it is they're talking about. Make sure it's clear kind of what what they're talking about. Um, so uh, I do have a question, though. Why or how would atomic weight, you know, an average value, be useful? It's super useful because it can act as a conversion factor, as a conversion factor, between the number of atoms and mass. Okay. 
So I've got a question down here. So how many atoms of boron are in a 12 grand sample of boron? And use one AMU equaling this many grams. Okay. So if we have a 12 grams, we have a 12 grams of boron, right? We want to take that and figure out how many atoms of boron we'd have, right? So we have a 12 gram sample of boron. That's definitely going to start off our calculation. 12 grams of boron. We're going to have to get these grams to cancel. But do I have boron 10 or boron 11? Well, I have a sample, right? And this sample must have come from the Earth's supply of boron, right? So it doesn't make sense to just use one atomic mass or the other, but rather the atomic weight, because it's an average that basically accounts for all the boron that exists naturally. So what we're going to do here is we're going to convert this 12 grams. We're going to cancel these grams by using this conversion factor that they've provided to us. So we'll have 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 24 grams on the bottom, or grams of boron, uh, and one atomic mass unit of boron up top. So that'll cancel the grams of boron there. And we've got to get rid of these atomic mass units. So we're going to have atomic mass units of boron on the bottom. And up top here, I'm going to put atoms of boron. Okay. So based on this, we found the atomic weight to be 10.81, right, or 10.810. Um, so that's basically the the atomic weight of one atom of boron, right? So this allows us to cancel the AMUs here, and we end up getting our answer. And since they, we started off with two significant figures with 12 grams, we're going to have an answer with two significant figures, 6.7 times 10 to the 23rd boron atoms, or atoms of boron. And that's our answer there. So that's one of the places where atomic weight is useful. So I hope that video was helpful in kind of discussing the differences between those two, and hopefully this practice problem was a little bit of, was a little bit of help as well. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to hit it with a like and subscribe for more content. Also, follow Move University on the different social media links in the description below. Thanks and happy studying.